Mauro Kante and his family worked hard to prepare these fields and plant them with corn. But nothing could prepare Mauro for the effects of El Nino. El Nino is being blamed for a drought which gripped Guatemala for much of the past year. The 34-year-old subsistence farmer says his family's entire corn harvest was ruined. El Nino has disrupted the normal weather pattern on which farmers like Mauro depend, raining when it's supposed to be dry and dry when it's supposed to be wet. This is the third year in a row he's been hit by drought, and he's worried how his family will survive. Desastre, no hay comida. Nosotros no podemos pensar qué vamos a hacer para el de mañana. Si hoy lo tenemos mañana, no tenemos que estar pensando dónde lo vamos a conseguir, cómo. Poverty in Guatemala is widespread, with millions of people surviving off the land. So changing weather is cause for alarm. The World Food Program's Mike Vargas has been visiting subsistence farmers across Guatemala. Some farmers told him they'd gone a month and a half without rain during the critical growing season. In some parts of Central America, an estimated 60 percent of corn and 80 percent of bean crops may be lost to dry weather caused by El Nino. The United Nations says hundreds of thousands of families will need food assistance. This is the worst dry season we have had since 35 years ago. Um, and it's affecting not only Guatemala, but from Nicaragua up to here. El Salvador has been hit very hard, Honduras as well. Nearly 2.5 million people are affected by El Nino. Inside their tiny mud shack, Mauro's wife prepares corn tortillas for her children. Tortillas are what the family eats for breakfast, lunch and dinner. But today, Clara had to borrow a few pounds of cornmeal for their noontime meal. As each day passes, making sure their five children get enough to eat becomes more of a struggle. Working to buy food isn't much of an option either. Jobs here pay as little as $5 a day, if you're lucky enough to find one. De esos dos años anteriores, pues, para nosotros hemos tenido que, que estar comprando. Pero a veces nosotros nos afligimos porque en el área Acá no hay cómo ir a ganar un fornal, porque la gente aquí de San Pedro Pinula se, se dedica a ganado y no utilizan la, el, el agricultor para, para trabajo. In Guatemala, when food is scarce, the youngest often suffer the most. Nearly half of all Guatemalan children are malnourished, the fourth highest rate in the world. Inside this hospital an hour from Mauro's community, children are treated for malnutrition. Five-month-old Eileen Gonzalez is nearing the end of her stay. She suffers from kwashiorkor, a potentially fatal type of severe malnutrition caused by protein deficiency. When she arrived a week ago, Eileen was so swollen with fluids she could hardly open her eyes. Multiply her case thousands of times, and it's clear why the consequences for Guatemala are far reaching. Si los niños no se recuperan nutricionalmente, van a ser afectados en su desarrollo eh, mental, en lo que es la calidad de educación. Les va a costar aprender, ¿verdad? Definitivamente que estos niños van a tener eh, un diferencial en lo que es la población económicamente activa para el país. Healthcare workers worry that as food reserves continue to disappear, child malnutrition will rise. People working in drought-ravaged areas say there are signs that's already happening. They are trying to conserve as much as they can, so they are skipping meal times in some areas, or diminishing the rations that they give to their children and, uh, and, to, and they, they, they eat themselves. They even are uh, trying to get the rotten uh, corn in the fields to eat, and that is not uh, a good corn for that. Some small farmers have turned to other work to try and ride out the crisis. Shikel Augustine is focused on his sowing, 
after losing the equivalent of three months of food to the drought. In past years, he would use money from selling some of his crops to buy shoes or other necessities for his five children. Now he hopes to sell enough suits to make up the difference. Next door, Shaquille's wife and children salvage what they can of their corn harvest. Between the drought and the poor local economy, 21-year-old Yesenia, a teacher by training, dreams of a better life far from her community. Se siente uno atrapado, como quien dice, no encuentra una salida eh, por donde ir, este, qué hacer para ayudar a, a la familia. Si yo tuviera la oportunidad y me la diera, yo me fuera. Me fuera para allá eh, para poderle yo aquí ayudar a mis papás y a mis hermanos. Que me... The majority of Guatemalans who migrate to the United States illegally are subsistence farmers. And while there are no hard numbers, experts say that El Nino could drive more people north. And while that might appear to be a solution, in reality it could deal another blow to the communities hit by drought. Se ha hecho un análisis de que el desarrollo local de, del interior del país muchas veces se ve detenido porque la mano de obra más joven migra. Entonces eh, vemos eh, a veces poblaciones y comunidades donde eh, la mayoría de veces son mujeres o las abuelas las que se quedan con los eh, niños y eh, el desarrollo local queda de alguna manera estancado. Se envían remesas, pero las remesas no logran pues, constituir palanca de desarrollo para las comunidades. Recurrent drought and extreme weather are likely here to stay. According to the Global Climate Risk Index, Guatemala is one of the 10 countries most vulnerable to climate change. Without the proper resources to study things like El Nino and global warming, scientists are deeply concerned. You have heard that information is power, and data is information. And if we don't have information, in this case data, we are powerless to predict how these conditions are, are going to be in the, in the near future. I mean, I'm not talking in five years, I'm talking about next year. NGOs and Guatemala's government are now turning their attention to climate adaptation. In Mauro's community, that means applying new techniques like terracing and planting drought-resistant varieties of corn and beans. Mauro says these techniques are giving him hope. A mí me, lo que me presenta un frijol verde, un buen tallo, un buen grano, me presenta y imagino que es cuando un niño nace bien fortalecido, que está bien nutrido, nace fuerte, gordo, belleza, fuera de enfermedades. Pues esto me presenta un lo verde. El Niño is expected to continue until March, bringing more wild weather. Guatemala's subsistence farmers hope these predictions are wrong. Their families' futures depend on it. David Mercer, Al Jazeera, Guatemala.